<laughs> Joining us on the phone right now, head coach of the Siena Saints, Jimmy Patsos. Big win over Canisius. How you feeling after that uh, road victory for you guys? No, it was a great win. It was nice because John Beeline was there, who could, you know, he coached nine years at Canisius and got him to the NCAA, which is, you know, once in nine years is an accomplishment because they haven't been back. It's hard in the MAC to go because only one team's probably going to go. This is a year maybe Monmouth with their out of conference wins could go, but John Beeline was there and it was nice to hear him say, you know, how, what a great league it is. And then we went out and kind of played D-line basketball. We moved the ball well. Uh, we got it inside out. We got some open threes. And uh, LeVon, obviously, special Mike, because he didn't miss a shot. But Brett wasn't far behind him in his performance either. 27 you know, he was looking. Go ahead. <laughs> 27 points for Brett. And he and Javion Ogunyemi have really kind of carried you guys in Marquise Wright's absence, huh? Yeah, no, we got some insight. You know, he's a, Javion's a five who can play the four. Brett's a four who can play the three. LeVon's a three who can play the one. So we're a little lucky there. But Ryan Oliver's been a real rock for us. Obviously, Nico Clareth off the bench. But, you know, Brett doesn't care whose turn it is. You know, Brett's all about if it's my, if I, if I got the matchup, give me the ball. If it's not mine, someone else can do it. And uh, we're playing unselfish. We've been here for four days, so that's a little long. You know, we love Buffalo. There's nothing wrong with the anchor bar and going to sites. But we've been here a little long because it was a day game. And now we play a young Niagara team, playing very well. They beat Manhattan up here. Uh, Matt Scott and Emil Blackman are two prolific guards. They're two and three men. They're both six four, can shoot it, and they don't have a senior on their team. So Niagara's are very hungry. They're going to be excited to play the Saints. Um, you know, it'll be a different crowd in there. We had a great crowd for the, the John Beeline game, including you know a couple hundred Siena fans. The Siena fans have been great. But uh, it'll be a different game tonight. You know, we won't have Craig Allen from All Star Wine and Liquors, our friend who's amazing on the sidelines here. And we're on the road. And anytime you're on the road, you're vulnerable. It's it's weird. I'm I'm used to you coming in and taking over the studio on me, and now I just you're on the phone. I'll be back next week. Believe me, if it wasn't if it was Maris, that would have made the drive. We love you so much. But oh. Buffalo, I don't have that. We don't have the Lear Jet yet here at Siena. We haven't gotten there yet. We're not chartering yet. <laughs> yeah, you're so, working on it though. Plus, I know you guys don't want to talk to me. You want to talk about how Cam Newton and the Panthers are going to win 34 to 14 right now. 34 Panthers, to 14, 34 Panthers? 14. I said 31 yeah, to 10, 30. so Coach Patsos and I are in line. I got to tell you, yep. Coach, I, I think uh, I'm thinking Denver. You know, their defense is better than I thought. I just don't know if the offense is good enough to get anything done there, but what an amazing. Game Denver's defense. You know, they had Brady all over the place. Should Belichick have kicked one of the field goals? What do you think, Levesque? I know you're, you're I, on that. What do you think? That's Belichick to me. Brady thinks that he should have kicked one of the like gone for at least, you know, kicked that field goal. My thing right. is, Belichick's one of the chief guys who wanted the extra point pushback. His I guy know, misses the I extra know. point, changes the whole game. That changes. You can't blame Gaskowski because he's a great kicker. But, yeah, I... You know, we're sitting there watching five minutes ago. You figure you kick it. I mean, I know he's got a great offense, but, you know, he just thought they'd kick it. But going to be an exciting Super Bowl. We love Cam Newton, Under Armour guy. Yep. Um, so he's a real – I told you that what a good guy he is. It's going to be interesting. But, you know, it's it's down to that time. we got one football season game left, and then it's all college basketball for a while. And Fran McCaffrey's doing great at Iowa. You know, Will's got his wins going. We're playing, we're playing unselfish and we're playing hard. But – it's going to be a tough game tonight, but I encourage everybody to come out Saturday night. We've got our rival, Maris, to the Times Union Center. It'll be a great Saturday night to come out. No NFL, so come on out. And uh, the kids are playing really hard. Ken and LaRose is starting to pick it up a little bit. So is Evan Fisher. Some freshmen. we got some freshmen that are growing up. You're taking on Niagara tonight. Now, did you exchange notes with Coach Brown about this? Because I was at Niagara, you all. And I didn't think Niagara looked all that good against the Danes. Yeah, they're all right. They were beating us at halftime. And by the way, they're, like I said, they're a young team that's going to be excited to play us. They, I like me and Coach Brown. I watched that. We watched games. You know, I watched his game. I think Lucius. Oh, no, we're not allowed to go to that one because Lucius goes to a few of their games being an Albany grad. We can't go to the games before we scout them. But, you know, he's Will plays really good defense. They probably want to play a little slower tempo than us. See, we still got to get up and down. But, you know, like I said, this guy Blackman, I'm telling you, number two, Emil Blackman, and number 13, Matt Scott, lefty. They they, they, they got two guys that are going to be all week before it's said and done. They don't have a senior, so they're going to be super excited to play basketball. They don't care what their record is. And it's in the Gallagher Center, the home of Frank Layden, UB Brown. Uh, Calvin Murphy played there. You know, there's three Hall of Famers that played in that gym. So it'll be a tough game. But, um, 
you know, Albany at their place, you know, nobody's going to go into Albany and look good, really, quite frankly. He's played really tough at home, and plus they grind it out. His defense is good, and that's going to be a little different. Up here, we're going to try and still go up and down, and they'll, they'll, they'll be right there with us, believe me. Coach of the Sienna, uh, Sienna Saints men's basketball team, Jimmy Patsos, joins us on the Leah line. Thanks to our friend Craig Allen over at All-Star Wine and Spirits. And Billy Lee team. is my friend. I didn't know he ran the Leah line. I love Billy Lee. Yeah, he Good pays, he mean, pays the phone bill. Like, but... <laughs> he pays the phone bill for us, Jimmy. Hey, take what you can get. See, you got all the big time. You got all the big wigs in town. Billy and Michael Lee are great guys. They, they got a place Burger Fire our team goes to. They're great people, but... Yeah, so go ahead. What do you guys got for me? What else you got? Well, I mean, usually at this point, you start telling me about what Brian Cashman said when you guys were at dinner together. Well, hey, look, I mean, his guy got his reliever got, you know, they didn't press charges, so that's good news for the Yankees. I mean, pitchers, catchers, or what are they, February 18th, 19th? 19th. Is that what it is? February 19th, both Mets and Yankees. You know, so that'll be interesting. I mean, I love Cespedes coming back for three years. That was kind of cool. Shows you how much you like the Mets and the team. They're dangerous now. $75 million. He can live on that, right? I think he'll find a way. You know, he'll, he'll tough it out. <laughs> he passed up the Nationals to do it. Yeah. I know. He didn't want to go play with those guys. He must have liked Murphy. Well, yeah. What is going on with that? I mean, you got all the inside track. Uh, the Nationals can't get the free agents to go to him. They, Bryce Harper allegedly has got one foot out the door as soon as he can. What's wrong over there? I don't know, you know, I don't know. They've, I was down there when they got that franchise started. You know, I'm sort of a Yankees guy, so it's a different look. And also, like the, the Orioles, we were my wife, big Orioles fans from being in Baltimore. We went to those games. I never really grasped the Nationals. I do know they've kind of tried to buy their way into the thing. The Jason Worth was the first one, $125 million for him. That's a lot. So, all of a sudden, you know, I don't know. I don't know if guys don't want to play there because they don't really care. You know, hey, they care about the Redskins down there. That, that's a Redskins town. So, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you what. When Strasburg didn't pitch for those that playoff thing, I think people got turned off a little bit by after that. But, I mean, in terms of last year, everybody thought they were going to roll to the World Series and they didn't make the playoffs. But I'm just happy for the Mets. Father Kevin, our former president at Siena, who's a great guy. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of friends that are Mets fans, you know. And what, what it is is it's interesting to see. You know, they keep it within their budget, but I really impressed it. Cespedes just said, I like it here. I want to stay. I love Bartolo Colon. He wants to stay. They were fun to watch. They got the young pitchers. I like the Dark Knight. I think he's a cool dude. and You know, it's good for it. So now, all of a sudden, you got Cespedes back. And, I mean, that might be in enough offense with, with, with the, you know, the, the pitchers they have. So, like we always say, you want a little depth. And that's why Evan Fisher has been helping us and, and Ken and LaRose. They're young guys that are getting better. But you still need some vets. And if Cespedes can be like a proven guy that helps them, I think that's a great thing for him. Coach, I got another Sienna question for you. It's something I think I've heard you hint at before, but now I want the real answer. I was talking with Maryland's assistant coach the other day about Kevin Herter. I want to know yeah. if you're going to get a Herter-Herter game at some point in the next four years. Are we going to see Kevin and Tom Jr. go against each other? No, we would love to do that. We would love to. You know, we would go to for one. we go down there twice, have them come up once, but they have to pull the trigger. I think Mark Turgeon and the Terps are just worried about trying to get to the Final Four right now, and that will be done like in the off season. But sure, we're both Under Armour schools, and we would love to have them come up. We would, we would do a two for one. We offered that this year; it didn't happen. So, you know, in, in other words, your, your scheduling's a year out. Like we're full already for next year. The year after, it, something like that could be done. John Dargeni and myself work on scheduling together, but that would be great. And I think. I think they're both going to have really solid, good careers for four years, so there'll be time to get that done. But I certainly would be in favor of that. Me too. <laughs> that would be that. That would be the most hyped Capital Region game outside of the Albany Cup since we had Jimmer come back and play uh, Vermont at the Glens Falls Civic Center. Yes, they did. Sold out. Mike Lonigan was the coach there, and we want to play in Glens Falls. We like that place too. But Vermont has to see. Vermont's got to come down and give up their game because we have a contract and we get more people than they do in the Times Union. But I'd like to play a game. The scheduling's tough because the mid-major thing's gone. I was talking with uh, Andy Rizoulis, who does our games. Back in the day, Pittsburgh, Stanford, Syracuse, you could get it. Your Bayheim's not coming to the times. You, nobody wants to come anymore. They, they can't afford the one loss in these big conferences. They can't afford the RPI hit. They don't want to risk losing, and they all have so much TV money. They'd just rather give us 75000 and have us come with no return game. Isn't it? The money is like play money for these BCS schools because of the football money. So now they're like, we don't want to go home and home, which 
A, would be fun and fiscally responsible, but the one thing you can do is to get a recruits team to go home. You know, Wake Forest went to Bucknell because their center Thomas is from, you know, the Bucknell area. Our chances to get either, you know, Notre Dame's got the kid Elijah Burns or if, you know, if Kevin Herter wants to come back home, that's probably the only last chance you get to get a BCS home because the money doesn't matter to these guys anymore. You know, VCU's charter, and they're buying games. GW, I'm up here at University of Buffalo. They have a they, they buy a money game and take six charters. Ooh. St. Bonaventure has five money games and charters planes a couple times. So they don't want to come. You know, if it wasn't for the Franciscan Cup, I'm not sure if St. Bonaventure would come play us. So schedule's tough, but John Dargeny and I work together, and we're getting creative. We've got some cool schools being added, and you do the best you can. Jimmy Patos show right here on 1045 the team brought to you by All Star Wine and Spirits. Patos, did you hear about uh Blake Griffin breaking his hand on one of the staffers uh faces? I did not hear about that. I'm surprised because my wife's on Twitter. We saw the panda in the snow. <laughs> you saw my Rick James thing. <laughs> um yeah, we saw Bill Walton getting crushed because he was talking about volcanoes and earthquakes, but we didn't see anything about Blake Griffin. They go out to dinner in Toronto. Apparently, the equipment staffer, uh, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and all those guys are friends. Uh, something happens during dinner. Blake Griffin and him go outside. He, Blake Griffin breaks his hand on his face. Probably not a good move. They're saying he's going to be out weeks, not days. What do you do if you're a coach and you got a guy punching, you know, uh, your AD? <laughs> I mean, first of all, it's their pros. Pros very different college um i don't understand why that happens because you know a non-violence campaign first of all I'm a, I'm a pacifist but second of all i mean that's your that's your that's your bloodline that's your lifeline of your hands you know in other words that's what you do um i just and they're having a pretty good season obviously there must have been some type of altercation but i guess you just start the andre jordan and that's why you got paul pierce slide him to the three you do what you do and hope he's better in three weeks and it's a whole, you know, I don't know, Blake Griffin, isn't he dating? He had a baby with the girl that used to date Carson Palmer and everything. So he's he's had some interesting off-the-court stuff I've seen. But, you know, it's all about the playoffs for the pros. But I, I find that odd. I, I, I don't understand that. But once again, I guess when you have that much money, maybe you're not always thinking as clear as you should. But you just think you just think as a basketball player, you'd be like, oh, I can't really do this. Remember Bro Durham? Didn't we learn in Bro Durham? Yeah. Punch with your left hand? Yeah, meat, punch with your left hand. Right? Oh. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see that. But anyways, that's, that's other stuff. But we're running out the door to go to the game. Miss you guys. I'll be in the studio next week. Uh, Try to get everybody actually, to come next, down on Saturday. Next week, Coach, we're going to be in San Fran, so you're going to have to charter a plane and come see us. I can't wait to talk. I'm coming in the studio and doing your show. I'll do all three hours while you're there. I'll do the three hours while you're in Santa Clara. You do three. I'll do the final four. You got a deal. All uh, right. You're the man. See you guys. Thanks. Good luck to Coach.